Okay, EEG physiology. Now, EEG stands for electroencephalography. Okay, electroencephalography. Which means what? Encephalo, that's the head. All the electrical activities in the head, brain, importantly, are graphed. So, it's a diagrammatical representation of what goes on inside your brain. Good? Now, while studying EEG, you should know why you're studying it for. So, mainly we will be correlating this video to another video which will be uploaded along with it. That is the physiology of sleep. Okay. So, there will be a link in the description for that as well. And we look at sleep, how it happens, all the physiology, the electrical activities that happen in the brain and all the biochemical things. So, here we'll just discuss about the EEG. Okay. Now EEG is measured by something called the electroencephalograph. So we take out the Y and it becomes electroencephalograph. Yeah. Now EEG has a few components. So we look at the waves. There are waves which we will look at. We will look at the instrument which measures it and different type of readings which we take. Waves we'll look at later. We have an image over here. It's a beautiful image. If you just understand this image, it's enough. You know, you will know the complete EEG, how it works, all the different. If you just look at this and understand this image, but to help you do that, I'm there. Yeah, I need to do something. The attribution of the image in the link in the description and the notes will be uploaded on the Facebook group. So you can check that out. Also, will be in the description. Now, the instrument again was the electroencephalograph you need electrodes so to measure any electrical activity you need some sensors which sense this so those are the electrodes and in this we can use either unipolar or bipolar electrodes okay just like in ECG we use unipolar or bipolar now when you use a unipolar electrode you will have one active and one inactive one okay but before that where are the electrodes placed electrodes are placed either on the skull there will be a cap with all the receptors like you see in ECG that will be placed on the skull and they will take the recording just like ECG there will be application of gel over it and then they will be placing the electrodes using the cap and then they will take the recording or you can open the skull and then place it on the brain okay in some cases they do that also and in some cases what they do is they open the skull they take the brain and they insert it into the brain so they'll have pin like things which should be which they will insert into the brain to take more accurate readings now when you take unipolar the active one will be placed where you want to measure it and the inactive one will be placed far away in let's say on the leg on the body itself but somewhere far away just like when we take ecg we place the electrodes over the chest so you have this six electrodes which are placing over the chest and there will be one lead the black one which will be placing on the leg right that's for grounding so this here we use for grounding and the bipolar both of them will be inserted in the brain brain okay but at different sites so you take the relative activity okay now the type of waves which we encounter in adults we have alpha beta and we'll talk about gamma later when i start discussing beta waves we have alpha beta and delta and in children along with this alpha beta delta you'll also have theta waves now theta waves since they're children they're poorly understood but they are there you can see them when you take an eeg reading of children but you can't see them specifically when you take adult eegs okay now we'll look at the waveforms proper now as i said we have this this is the alpha wave in the center which we are looking that's the alpha now let's consider alpha wave to be medium amplitude and medium frequency what does this imply Let's imagine alpha wave to be a folded piece of paper. Okay, it's folded. Now, when you open it up, it becomes big, right? So that is what delta waves will look like. 
unfolded piece of paper so since alpha is a folded piece of paper it will be smaller so you can see small wavelength and it's folded so it's smaller compared to delta which is like an open piece of paper so it's big in amplitude and big in wavelength and beta is smaller in both aspects so it has smaller wavelength and smaller amplitude so it's like a crumbled up paper okay so if you want to make a table of that alpha beta and delta here we have the amplitude the wavelength and the frequency alpha has medium beta has less and delta has the max let's say max for now or more the wavelength again if alpha is the medium if we take alpha as the reference the beta will be having less wavelength and delta will be having more wavelength because you see that they are bigger okay you see delta have bigger wavelength distance between two waves is big here compared to alpha and beta has less and frequency it's inversely proportional to the wavelength so if it's medium then beta will be having more frequency and delta has less frequency now how much I'll take it separately so hope you guys understand this basic part if you see something like this which is medium in amplitude and medium in frequency then it's alpha if you have something so widely spaced apart like this so wide wavelength and high amplitude then it's delta and if it's crumbled up like crumbled up piece of ball then it's beta small in both aspects so it's high frequency and low amplitude okay now we'll take each individually so when does alpha occur when does beta occur and when does theta occur when does gamma occur and all those so if you're looking at alpha alpha you see in a relaxed state if you're in a relaxed state that's when you'll be seeing alpha alpha waves now alpha waves have peculiarity of disappearing on stimulus so imagine a person is having alpha waves and i provide him a stimulus for example even the slightest stimulus like eye opening it will disappear that's what we can see in this electroencephalograph and one more thing you have to notice that alpha is highly prominent over the occipital region so all of these are alpha waves itself they are not different all of them are alpha waves but you can see the amplitude at the frontal area okay this is the parietal area and this is the occipital area you can clearly see that maximum amplitude so the most better reading we are getting in the occipital region so where is alpha waves the most prominent occipital region okay now when you open your eye again often so i'm guessing it's spanish i'm not particularly sure but yeah this is the part you see this is where the eye was open and the alpha wave disappeared so eye opening so even the slightest of stimulus imagine a person is relaxed okay relaxed then he will be having alpha waves like this these are the alpha waves and then light stimulus i pinch him or he opens his eyes they disappear okay and they're most prominent in the occipital region now this is what we call alpha block this disappearance is what we call alpha block on stimulus the disappearance of alpha waves are called alpha block now what's the frequency of alpha waves you know we just have to cover all the topics so i will be dealing with a few numbers as well the frequency is 8 to 12 waves per second and the amplitude is 50 micro volts okay uh, since alpha waves are seen during periods of relaxation before going to sleep that's what you get alpha waves are seen before going to sleep so we'll take this when we go to sleep physiology in the next video okay uh, we'll come back now we'll look at beta 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 okay beta here it is now beta waves have an amplitude so amplitude is less than alpha what was the amplitude of alpha it was 50 micro volts they range from 5 to 10 micro volts and the frequency is 15 to 60 okay 15 to 60 
when do we see beta waves we see beta waves in case of high mental activity okay let's say the person is thinking something or he's solving some math problems or he's in tension so your brain is working a lot and in this case of high mental activity you will be seeing beta waves good now what happens if you increase your pressure if you increase so beta waves are seen during brain activity alpha seen during rest beta seen during brain activity so beta so brain activity what happens if you increase your activity so let's say increased amount of brain work in case of fear or solving highly complicated maths problems the frequency will increase correspondingly and from 15 to 60 it reaches somewhere around 30 to 100 waves per second so the frequency with your mental activity increases and some authors like to call this phenomena where you're having 30 to 100 frequency as gamma waves and some people like to consider this to be beta waves itself but a increased frequency type of beta waves okay now beta waves do not show opening eye effect and some people like to call this high frequency area to be gamma some people like to call it as a beta because they're originating from beta now theta they're seen in children not clearly understood so we'll skip it then also not asked much and the last one we have delta is while well, discussing delta waves delta waves are seen in adults as well as children now in adults you see them during the periods of sleep now if you see them when the person is not sleeping then you can say that there are some problems for example tumors or epilepsy or depression the person is having depression now during depression there is increased amount of brain activity to depress you so if you are seeing delta waves in adults other than sleep then you can say that there is something wrong with the person's brain in children these are seen even when the person is awake okay in the children you can see them even when the person is and when the child is awake now the amplitude is higher what was the amplitude for alpha it was 50 for delta the amplitude is 20 to 200 volts. so you can see some small waves over here and you can see some large amplitude over here again small so they vary from 20 to 200 micro volts and the frequency is very less 3 to 5 1 to 5 actually 1 to 5 frequency okay all the nodes are available so finalize we'll summarize with this to finalize so we have a delta waves with a frequency of 1 to 4 okay 1 to 5 and then we have theta waves we'll ignore this and alpha waves range from frequency of 8 to 13 according to this chart we have got and beta range from 15 to 50 but I said it was 60. Okay, the diagram has referred to a different author. See, that's what happens when you refer multiple sources. So, an average 50, and then we have gamma band expanding till 100. Okay, and you can see the amplitude as well. So, again, once more we'll revise delta till 4, then from 8 to 13, you have alpha, and from 15 to 50, you have beta waves. Amplitude alpha have around 50 micro volts beta have very less they have around 5 to 10 micro volts and delta they range from 20 to 200 that's it i'll see you in the sleep video hope you understood it you can request for any specific topics in the comment section below thank you guys bye